Hello and welcome back or to The Great Couch, where we say that life and marriage really is not black and white, but many shades of grey and we get to explore these nuances, these grey areas together to become better individuals in better relationships. I am Stanley. And I'm Otito. And, <laughs> and we are coming to you from... Where? Somewhere in North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> Appalachian... Appalachian. Mm. <laughs> We're saying hi to our friends. We're, hi to our friends. We're doing this live. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not going to be live, but see me live. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. So there's always a story, right? Mm -hmm. For the longest time, I have known that I am dyslexic. And I didn't really think much about it because it was always the words that I, I have a problem reading straight lines and keeping to text. And if I want to be completely honest with you, even right now with these glasses, I'm still having a problem reading straight lines and keeping to the text. Um, growing up, I didn't mind, mind it so much because most of the smart kids wore glasses. In fact, I knew some friends that didn't have any glasses problem, but they wanted to wear glasses just so they look smart. If you know anybody that does that now, just keep their secret secret for now. <laughs> you know, however, fast forward, I started reading slowly, stopped reading. I didn't really think much about this until just recently, Otito mentioned to me that dyslexia is a form of neurodivergence. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Uh, alarm bells started going off in my head because I, anything new divergence, I looked at that with the form of stigma and mm -hmm. I, if these two things are linked together, perhaps there is an issue. Yeah, so um, <laughs> actually, um, Stan had a hard time getting me on here today because this is still like a trigger point uh, for me. And one of the reasons is because, you know, I mean, he did tell me before we got married, he was like, I'm dyslexic. And I'm like, oh, you know, because I too thought dyslexia was more about reading, right? But then we get married and it's like, you say something and it's forgotten like the day after or we're trying to go somewhere and directions are like a dead zone when i say like black hole and i don't like getting lost so this became like really big issues right really really big issues but so many other things and you know it took me like saying what is going on you know um because at some point you start to wonder i mean there's so many other things that go into neurodivergence that this episode cannot even cover, which is why we're just touching the tip of the surface. But it began to really impact our relationship because to me it became a thing of I cannot be what's the word? I cannot be your crutch. That's kind of what it was, right? That's kind of the way I saw it. Like you were using me um as a crutch. And I was really mad. Like I'm telling you, like I was really mad about it, you know. Um, but not from the perspective of at him, but at the situation, right? It was a situation of what is going on? Like, I thought we were supposed to be two adults, right? Um, it became until we kind of had our second child. I started to know more about executive functioning and started to see, you know, piece things together. I'm like, wow, okay, maybe this thing is really easy brain thing and not something that someone is just presuming that the other person is doing deliberately, which is the, the key thing there. And so I started to do, you know, more research because some of us, I guess, are born, <laughs> are born researching. <laughs> and then that's when I found out that this lifestyle was not just about um, reading. And I got even madder. <laughs> so could this be the reason? I mean, maybe it is a reason, at least in our relationship, why communication can be so so a triggering each issue you know with both of us um the two spectrums that come to mind with this neurodivergence and where is there is the hyper focus whereby you're just keeping a straight mind you anything else that someone says mm -hmm. and then there's the other parts which falls into my category the attention span of a goldfish where hey it's a, a moving bullet squirrel and things like that so those two things typically made for challenging conversations with both of us mm -hmm. why is this important to you as in why what what is in it for you mm -hmm. in this well really two areas that come to mind one there's an interesting study that we saw that it said that uh, neural couples that have one or both uh, pe people that have neurodivergence are three times more likely to go through 
divorce or approach divorce as opposed to couples that are neurotypical. Mm -hmm. And the second thing being that um, when one of either couples are able to identify, recognize this neurodivergence, there's much more, there's a bit a better ability to reframe and recraft conversation because there's more understanding that comes into it, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's where is it for you as in, I'm not saying use the other person as a crutch, but I'm saying explore this area, you know, are uh, these symptoms that you see? Could they be? I think that's, that's the, the better way to the better way to could, they could they be, right? Because sometimes you really are just wondering, like, what is going on like I was? And then you start to wonder. And you heard me say I got mad. Obviously, I'm not mad, right? I'm not. <laughs> that's still a word that uh, I still laugh at to say, why are we using the word mad? But I digress. Um <clears throat> We found ways around it, and that's why we're here today. That's one of the reasons why the Great Girl started. That's one of the reasons why, you know, we're here putting out the things that we've done. Because all this while we've been sharing the things that are common to men, right? Because I don't think there's anything that we go to that so many couples don't go to. But this is one aspect that I think, if you think about it, one in eight adults, or one in eight of the eight billion people on earth are neurodivergent, mm -hmm. right? That's a lot of people. And, you know, these are, if, if you start from childhood, these are people who grow up and then become adults and they get married, right? And they have children and so on. And so um, they get into relationships and these are the kinds of things we're talking about. And so tomorrow is going to be a time when we go deeper into this to say, what were the things we found out that helped us so far? Because it took a breaking down, right, for us to then build back up. Right? It took a real breaking down, like I said, when I said I got mad, it wasn't mad of at him, but mad of just, I was done. I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. Um, but yeah, God helped us. And we're still here today. <laughs> and hopefully you will join us tomorrow uh, for our webinar. It's still time to register just right here. Uh, Join in, register. We hope to see you tomorrow. We'll be in one hour interactive. What are we exploring? We're exploring uh, easily uh, identifying traits or symptoms mm -hmm. and the coping mechanisms that we used mm -hmm. and how this can be a superpower whereby mm -hmm. what seems to be a great weakness becomes a, a great strength. Yeah. Uh, so or a marriage. To, mm -hmm. Or a marriage. So yeah. We hope to see you guys tomorrow from our, from not our couch, from somebody else's couch <laughs> <laughs> to you guys. Uh, bye for now. I hope to see you guys tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>